All right, so let's take a look at this problem. This one is called number of islands given an M by N 2D binary grid grid, which represents a map of ones, which are the land and zeros, which are water, return the number of islands. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water, meaning that the uh, spaces outside are water, so we don't have to think about like if there was an island touching outside of uh, the grid we actually have. Additionally, it's important to know that they're saying horizontally or vertically because this tells us that if there is a one diagonally, it does not count, it would be a separate island. All right, so then looking at our example here, uh, you see uh, these ones, and there's this one touching vertically, and then otherwise you have these ones touching vertically. So you can see just looking at it, there's only one island because you have horizontally touching or vertically touching all the ones, and then the rest are zeros. This second example is a good example of what I was just mentioning that we need to consider is does diagonal count? It does not. So you see there's an island here in this little pocket of four, and then this is an island, and then these two are an island, so you have three islands. So, seeing these assumptions, uh, M is our first grid length, which would be our row, and N is our column, and we know that M is at least one, so we don't have to worry about having an index out of bounds, because, uh, you know, we're going to at least have one row. So the reason why I say that is uh, you'll see here in a minute when I make a convenience function to essentially store the rows and columns. So we're going to want to figure out what we want to return, which is our count. So we'll just go ahead and initialize our count to zero. Uh, let's make our convenient function, convenience function for our rows and our columns. So our rows would equal the grid dot length. And now here's the part I was talking about where this is good to know if there's at least one row, which there is. So we can just automatically say uh, the first row, let's get the length of that and that will give us our column. And uh, you know, the other thing here now to consider is, all right, now how do I handle a grid problem? In a lot of these grid problems, you're probably going to do a breadth first search or depth first search while you're uh, looking for something. And the other thing to consider is when you look at these problems, do you need to reset the values after? Are you expected to like return a grid with some original values or are you just looking through it for certain results? And in this case, we're just looking to count our ones. And we also want to make sure that we don't end up counting ones we've already counted. So the best strategy for something like this is to just replace the values with some value you don't need. And we also know that uh, zeros are water and we're not gonna count those, we're just using those as like a boundary case. So what we can do instead is just change our ones to zeros after we've counted them. So, uh, you know, typically when you're looking through a grid, you're gonna have a couple loops, one to go uh, left to right and the other one to go uh, vertically. So let's go ahead and start writing that function. So for and i equals zero, i is less than your row count, and then i plus plus. So that's our first iteration. And then our inner loop will use j, just because this is bothering me, I'll line it up. All right, and then j is less than columns and j plus plus. All right, so now we are iterating uh, all the way left to right, top to bottom for our grid. Now, what is our condition where we need to actually do something special? Well, uh, that would be if we find a one. So if grid of i j equals one, we've found something that we need to work with. So now we know we found an island. So let's just say count equals count plus one, or you could even do uh, just count plus plus. And now that we've found that uh, we also want to then remove or you know update our neighbors so that way we don't count these again so if we were at this one right here uh, we don't want to then iterate to the next one and start counting that as an island so here's the special logic where we need to start doing some sort of search uh, in this case i'll just probably do a depth first search where i'll go all the way to the right all the way left uh, all the way up all the way down until I don't hit any other ones. So once I hit this one, I can go over and start marking these as zeros and so forth. 
So let's also say that we will then end up creating a depth first search function. And after that depth first uh, search function is done in this whole top to bottom, at the very end, we will return our count. So now let's write our depth first search function. So what are we gonna to wanna to pass it? Uh, typically, we're probably going to wanna pass it the grid that we're working with. So let's just go ahead and make that same uh, grid, that character grid that we have uh, being passed into the start of our function. Uh, we're also going to likely want to know what is our current I, what is our current J. Uh, for convenience, so we're not constantly recalculating our rows and columns, let's also pass in our row and our column, and that should be it. So then we can basically start doing some recursive uh, searching through our grid if we have all these values. Now we need to consider what are some cases where we could start having an index out of bounds where we don't want that because that would actually cause our program to you know, throw an exception. So if i is less than zero, or i is greater than or equal to our row because uh, you know zero in our row is really the uh, if, if our index started at one then it would just be row but otherwise um, that's why we have to say greater than or equal to the row being the problem so now the other one would be if j is less than zero or uh, J is greater than or equal to our column. And the last thing is that if we run into a zero, then we would also want to stop. Okay, so this is our exit for our uh, recursion. Basically, this gets us out of if we were going all the way to the right or all the way to the left or up or down, we need a way to exit our recursion and no longer keep searching. Like I said, we don't want an index out of bounds and we don't want to count any numbers as islands if we've hit some water because once you hit water, that's it. You don't need to keep going because if you go down another value, if you were to start going to the right, keep going to the right, you know, if you were here, then you could start end up recursing down. We don't want that. Once you hit water, you're done. So this will be our exit for our uh, left, right, up, down. And now the other thing is that if we've gone in here and we've hit a value that uh, is a one, we want to then change that value that is a one to a zero so we don't count it anymore. And now, aside from that, um, here's where we want to do our depth first search. So we will want to go in all the directions and you can, you've seen, uh, There'll be solutions out there that you might find where they'll write like a convenience function for going left, right. Uh, for me personally, I just prefer to do it this way because it's just more readable for me. So you're going to need to pass in the I, but then uh, we're changing the I for this first direction, then J, and then row and column. And now, uh, so for this particular iteration, we're gonna change I to go plus one. And then we will also want to go I minus one, and then do the same thing, but for our J. So J plus one, and then J minus one. All right, so this goes, uh, you know, right, left, up, down, all of that. So you're covered. You've now covered all the different ways that you can traverse uh, to do your depth first search to find ones and zeros. So you're covered here as it keeps doing the recursion. It's going to go as far I plus one as it can. So let's do I plus one, I plus one, I plus one, as long as it'll val as long as it is valid. Otherwise, once it hits that invalid value, it's going to return and then it will start going into the next recursion step. It'll keep doing that I minus one until again, it's hitting invalid value, then the J and uh, plus one, then the J minus one. All right, so we're good there. And now the last step is we need to pass in our value here to start our recursion. So we won't do I plus one or J plus one because what we're doing is we're passing in that one that we find that we want to start with. And what will happen is, is we already found a one, we're going to pass where that one is in our function. We know it's valid um, because we're already 
basically in our valid range as per the two for loops here. So really we know that it'll pass this, uh, but we're passing it in anyways. And then this is the step that's important is that that one that we found is going to get set to a zero and then start doing that recursive depth first search uh, calls right here all the way to the bottom to we've gone left, right, up, down. Okay, so that should be it. We're just going to go ahead and run that. And as you can see, it has finished and uh, our answer is the expected answer. So let's go ahead and submit. And it was accepted. All right, so then our big O um, for the space complexity will just be M by N because we are going to essentially uh, potentially iterate through every value. Like if we started all the way at the top left and everything was one, then we could end up going all the way to the right, all the way down, all the way right, and so forth, where you would end up um, looking at every single value. So that's how you could end up really having M by N as your space complexity, where on the stack itself, there's M by N. Uh, now, additionally, as far as time complexity, M by N worst case, because you would end up having to potentially look at every single value in order to find all of the ones that are an island. So that should be it. If you have any questions on this, please let me know in the comments below. And if there's any other problems you want to see, or if you want any further explanation on this problem, please let me know. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Thank you.